A little more than a year ago, Hungary's conservative government, led by Prime Minister Viktor Orban, passed a new media law. Thousands of people have since taken to the streets. Some journalists have even gone on a hunger strike over what they call an attempt to centralize control and to curb media freedoms. There's one station, Club Radio, that finds itself at the center of this conflict. It's a liberal station, the only one prepared to openly criticize the government. Now it's fighting for its life and for its license to broadcast. Keeping a close eye on all of this is Brussels, because as a relatively new member of the European Union, Hungary is subject to some stringent standards on freedom of the press, standards that its critics say the country no longer meets. The Listening Post's Flo Phillips now from Budapest on the fight over the media in Hungary. Hungary's new media law gives uh, more power to a single regulator than any other media regulatory body in Europe. It's not uncommon for post-communist countries to have struggles with media freedom since the 1990s, but Hungary's new media law definitely poses the biggest challenge to media freedom that we've seen. Club Radio, one of Budapest's only liberal talk and news radio stations, is currently fighting to keep the broadcast license it has used for a decade. It is the highest profile case to date in the Hungarian government's attempt at media reform. The license of Club Radio expired in 2011. The Media Council published the rules of the competition for the renewal of this license. We lost with one single point. The decision to take the frequency of Club Radio it was a political decision from the very top. Since the 1st of January 2011, Hungarians have been protesting a new set of media laws they see as limiting freedom of the press. The laws were put into practice by Prime Minister Viktor Orban's conservative Fidesz party. Among the provisions, fines as high as 100,000 euros for print publications and 720,000 euros for broadcasters if their output is ruled politically partisan or offends public morals. The other issue is who decides when these laws have been broken. The government created a media council and appointed all five members. The combination of these laws, which are vague and therefore open to interpretation, as well as the body that enforces them, has Hungarians fearing the worst. The problems come in when you look closer at the media authority and its composition. So it's not that the board necessarily has this incredibly far-reaching powers, it's that all of the members were appointed by the government. They created a media law which tried to mix very much control, supervision over the whole media sphere, including public media, including internet, including the print and press. There was a huge protest inside the country from those who think that the press freedom is one of the most important values of any democratic country. There have been numerous protests over the last year, but the minister in charge of government communications dismisses the idea that there has been any political interference. The new media council, the new regulatory body as such, is not overseen by the government. So as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm not even supposed to go so, too deeply into its affairs because that's an independent body. If there's anybody who is overseeing it, it is parliament. With the office, new kind of set of standards come. If the person is up to these standards, there cannot be any complaint. If he or she not, then there should be an inquiry. Uh, so far, for the past almost year and a half, nobody has ever complained actually uh, concerning the independence of the party. That's more than debatable. It's not just about the media law or those who enforce it. Hungarians don't like what they're seeing on state-owned television. Here's an interview with a member of the European Parliament last December. In the background, State TV blurred out the former head of Hungary's Supreme Court. What relationship were Hungarian state media trying to hide? They are not just making favorable coverage with their own people installing key positions, reporters, editors also included, how they are hired, but they even altered the facts. They have been manipulating the news in the last 18 months, which is, I think, unacceptable. And that's why when the whole protest on 10th of December 2011, it started. 
The fight in Hungary over the media has been noticed both close to home by the European Union in Brussels and far away in Washington, D.C. I'm State Secretary of the United States and a lot of other people of the European Union expressed their support and taking Club Radio as a symbol for uh, freedom of press. You are in a club. You have the rules of the club. You cannot say that I'm joining Europe just for the benefits for me or for my interests, but when the rules are not favorable for me, then you don't uh, abide with the rules. So democratic institutions, freedom of press, are parts of this rule. For a country that prides itself on its relatively recent democratic traditions, many Hungarians feel that this new media law is a step in the wrong direction. Whilst only a handful of journalists have been prepared to speak out, Tens of thousands of viewers, readers and listeners have rallied in support of media freedoms. There was a demonstration on the street on the 22nd of January for Club Radio. About 20, 30,000 people were there and they expressed very loudly that they want Club Radio. Club Radio has become a symbol of freedom of press and we want to win our war for press of freedom and for Club Radio. These demonstrators may not yet have won their war, but they have prevailed in one recent battle. On March the 14th, the country's appeals court overturned the media authority's decision to strip Club Radio of its broadcasting license. This judicial decision may or may not affect the Media Council's future actions, but it should at least placate the demonstrators for a while and allow Viktor Orban's government to continue professing its support of media freedom. There's nothing wrong with Hungarian media freedom and media environment, and it's alive and kicking. The Hungarian legal system itself provides for all kinds of uh, guarantees concerning uh, the freedom of press, the freedom of expression, the plurality of the media, and simply it is not possible to use the Hungarian media law to curtail uh, these kind of freedoms in any way. Still, this is a big issue in Hungary, and between the protests on the streets, the ones in the parliament, the court cases, and those on the outside who are passing judgment on Hungary from afar, this story is far from over. More Global Village Voices now on Hungary and media freedoms. The key problem with the media law in Hungary is the media council. It's an embodiment of arbitrary power. We are going to bring down the arbitrary media council. We are going to do it by combining public protest with legal challenge at the Constitutional Court of Hungary and the European Court of Human Rights. The media authority is clearly biased, both in a uh, ideological and in a political sense. But it's not about direct political censorship, as many have feared. It's about double standards. If you are pro-government, you can get away simply with any professional or ethical offenses. Or it's much like Berlusconi was in the early 1980s. Finally.